All right, so we're going to show you where to find the samples in Act 1 in Baldur's Gate 3. All right, so we'll start off with the first one. You're looking at the Emerald Go Grove. Forgive me. Uh, the first one is going to be on the table in the disease drow, drow, well, beside the disease drow, in the Emerald Garden. So you're going to go into the temple here. You're going to go towards the back area, uh, basically bypassing Nettie and going around to the corner. Uh, there's actually two, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right here. Both of them are on the deck of dead people. Um, next, the Goblin Village. You want to go talk to the uh, Saza, and then you want to go talk to the main goblin. Once you get to her, follow through her. You got to go talk to them. Beat the two. It's an ogre in there as well. Uh, after that, then the people will come in. Your friends will come in with you. But once you kill her, and the bodyguard take care of it. All right, you can get that one there. The third is going to be in the east of the by village. You got to talk to the zealots really quickly. Uh, then interact with the dead body, and then you can just pull it out of the dead body there, right before the knolls area. Okay, number four is actually the knolls that you run right into right after that, the missing caravan. Um, if you can go in, talk to the knolls. You have to end the knolls. You have to kill them in order to get the one from the knoll. You can't make sure that he leaves or anything like that. You do have to take them out. Okay? And then that'll take care of number four. Now, number five and six are in the grove, uh, in the raid there. You have to side with Natara. You're going to get in there and get that once you, you'll get both of those. Once you finish the quest, you'll be able to get one and two moving forward, well, five and six moving forward. All right? Next, we're going to show you the ending of what happens when they get pulled from your mind. So, good luck. Hope you enjoy the clips. My, my, what manner of place is this? A patch of ground to call home. Some rest for the wicked, after all. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps. The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that? Love. Was that? <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormir, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael, very much at your service. An admirable display of manners, but I'm afraid I must decline. Yes, this encampment is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There. Middle of somewhere. The House of Hope, where the tired come to rest, and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. Call it a ninth sense. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary? Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. Come now. Why play hard to get when you're in deep over your tadpole head? One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. Oh, that. 
That's disappointing. I prefer it when my clients put up a fight. Only to realize victory was never an option. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. I'll be around, watching you squirm like a tadpole through a nice, juicy brain. All those pretty little symptoms, sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Give me a moment. A moment. This medicatrix. There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now. What was it you needed? Good enough to tell there's nothing obviously wrong with you. A bit tired, maybe. But we're all a bit tired. A tadpole? A mind flare tadpole? I... Uh, I'll do what I can. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. We need to be quick. This way. This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. Seems so. Gave Master Halson a right start. It's why he joined the adventurers on their expedition. To find out what was happening. A pity you got me instead of him. He spent days studying the drow's tadpole. Maybe he found an easier way. Still? Give me your arm, please. A cure. Now your arm, please. You don't have time for games. You don't have to be here for this. I'm interested in the procedure, actually. Please, go ahead. There. Be careful. Your legs will probably give out first. I'm sorry. Maybe Master Halson could have plucked it from your head. But I can't. Without him here... The only treatment for an illithid tadpole is death. You're a risk to the people around you. I'm truly, truly sorry. 
For what it's worth, the poison is painless. It'll be like going to sleep. Please, try to relax. This doesn't have to be hard. I can't risk you turning. You'd kill us all. I won't. I can't. I respect Koga, but she can't order me to put everyone's lives at risk. We can look after our own, starting with this. <sighs> All right. Master Halson did say the drow's tadpole was dormant. Maybe yours is too. But first, this is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here. And here's the antidote. Do not mix those two up. I know you're not changing yet, and I've no idea why not. But we have to assume it's only a matter of time. You must understand, you are in grave danger. You have to find Master Halson. He might be your only chance. Ask the adventurers that abandoned him. They're the only ones who know what really happened out there. All I know is they went to the old temple of Saluna, and he didn't make it back. Master Halson's a renowned healer. He studied the drow's tadpole for days and concluded he needed to find the source of the infection to understand its nature. We can only hope he succeeded in his mission. Otherwise, that vile's your only option. Oh no. He would have slipped me navel to nape if Master Halson hadn't put him down. The drow was leading a gang of goblins. Not a common pairing. They attacked us. We had to defend ourselves. It's only after we saw the tadpole crawling out of his head that Master Halson realized how serious things were. Remember what I said. Remember your oath. Take it one step at a time, Nettie. Come on. I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. As a matter of fact, I do. But why do you? That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. I can't attest to the specifics, but I do know that not long after insertion, the host, that's you, turns into a mind flare. As there's not a tentacle on your head, 
I can only assume you haven't been infected. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet God! I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. My friend! How do you fare? My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. You won't find a more learned opinion on this matter, I assure you. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. Don't fidget. The needle must slip behind your eye, not through it. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I... The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye. Then, reaching into his bag, he produces an ice pick. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now, don't move. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then, tap, tap, stab. Do you feel that? Ha! Huh. I think we have the blighter on the run. I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further. Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. Threat. He pauses, looks down at your eye and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. The 
there appears to be an amount of cosmetic damage. Please, try not to overexert yourself. You're in a rather fragile state at present. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um, it was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Ta! The nights have been restless, but you don't look any worse to wear. Holding steady? Fair. Anything else on your mind? Ah, that's better. is a bit of an inconvenience, isn't it? Because you stink. And I know the stench of Mind Flayer anywhere. I can tell you're almost done cooking. You know, you could turn just like that. What do you say? Want me to take care of the little bugger? sharp one. I am proposing a deal, but it's different from your little pact. You see, I prefer personal things. One of your pretty little peepers. I pluck it from your head, kiss it for luck, then back in it goes. Won't take but a moment. That is my price. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm afraid that's my business, Petal. It's nothing nefarious, though. I promise. A touch, but sure you have two eyes in your skull, don't you? No need to be precious. Glorious. One moment, and she needs her real nails for this. Restrictive. 
close that mouth, precious. Let's just swallow a fly. Not many get to see a hag in all her glory. Consider yourself blessed. Now choose, which eye will it be? Right or left? Hold on to your knickers. This might sting a bit. No, that wasn't so bad, was it? That color suits you. No, unless you want tentacles for a tongue, stay absolutely still. I've removed one of these buggers before, but it's a touch tricky. The parasite squirms at the hag's words. Pain builds behind your eye. You feel the creature writhe as it's dragged towards your ear. Then it bites back, burrowing even deeper into your brain. Ah! God's damned wretched! Ah! You little shit! You didn't tell me it was netherese! I'm not touching that! Shadow magic brings nothing but chains and misery. How could I have missed that stink? Like blood and piss congealing on my tongue. Ah, someone's tampered with your parasite. That's likely why you've not turned yet. Bless us. Your snow is a wet week. That thing has been touched by more than mind flayers. You're a dead soul walking. I can't help you. What about it? I held up my end of the bargain. It's not my fault the Riglet's tainted by shadow magic. I want nothing to do with you or that scum in your brain. You're bloody right it wasn't. I agreed to remove an illicit spore. That thing is an abomination. But let it not be said that Auntie Ethel doesn't honor her debts. Here, it's on you to fix yourself. Now get out! Come now, Marina. Time to go. Bye-bye, <laughs> lovelies. Where has she gone, I wonder? Tainted. That could explain the unusual course of this infection. Agreed. I see no reason to divert from purification protocol. We may not have yet turned, but the parasite still inflicts its visions upon us.
As the pain muddles your thoughts, your minds become entangled. A familiar sensation. She too carries a parasite. Her faith floods into you, a tide of shuddering ecstasy. Her tadpole nestles within that mania, secure, hidden. I feel you in there, digging around. Works both ways. And I saw some weird shadows swimming around in your head just now. Maybe I can help with that. Us true souls gotta look out for one another. A creature? There's definitely something rotten in there. Let me take a closer look. I ain't seen anything like this before. Let's deal with this in my chapel. It's private. Don't want this lot interfering with true soul business. Priestess, we want the mark. Ready to clear your head. Don't want a crowd of gawpers. Everybody else needs to leave. Ready to clear your head. Smart. All you need to do is open yourself to the absolute. And I'll do the rest. Don't want anyone peeping on private matters. So. There we go. Secret and safe. Well, secret. Psionic feelers creep across your mind like a pickpocket's fingers seeking flaws in fabric. Sifting deeper, she sees the mind flayer holding a wriggling tadpole to your eye. And then the vision lurches, and you are looking through her eyes as a tadpole squirms into her skull. Help! We need to fish that thing out before it eats any important parts of your brain. Don't you worry. I've got everything I need to fix you. Might get a bit messy, though. It involves you putting your trust in the absolute. Simple. You won't regret this. Being a true soul, you know the absolute don't like to touch nothing unclean. So drink this. It will purify ya. Sweet dreams. I'll see your ugly mug on the other side. Wakey, wakey. Don't bother struggling. You ain't going nowhere. The Absolute wants to know all about that critter in your head. So start talking. I know that much. I saw the whole horrible story in your memories. And I know what happens next. 
your teeth fall out, your skin rips off, and you turn into one of them. Stop it! Why would I want to do that? I'm gonna keep you here so I can see every gory detail and hear every whimper and scream. Not likely. You're forgetting one thing. I've got the absolute to protect me. But you, you're on your own. Nothing more than a skin suit for that monster inside you. You're gonna be my new pet. A ferocious squiddy. All for myself. You test the weight of the chains, looking for weak points. Open your papers, freak. It's time. You should be sprouting tentacles by now. But you're still the same kind of ugly you always was. Disappointing not to have my own squiddy. But your giblets will make for a tasty supper. Sorry. I may have left that a little late. No lasting damage, I hope. Carilla Heartflame. At your service. My master has been keeping a close eye on you. When you got yourself in this predicament, he sent me to help. An observer. He's curious about you and your condition. At this point, you're more interesting alive than dead. So here I am, your savior in times of need. <clears throat> be a little more careful. That skin's valuable, and we won't always be watching. The grove stands, nature prevails. I owe you my thanks, and an introduction. I am Halson, first druid of the Emerald Grove, and I sense you have a problem you seek my help with. Yes, I can sense it inside you, the imbalance these beasts create. You have time yet, however. Ceramorphosis is not running its normal course. I will do what I can to help you. Let us speak tomorrow. You and I both have matters to see to first. As for what you've done for the Grove, speak to Wrath. He will see to your reward. Then go forth. There are no easy paths to what you seek. If you seek my aid, you must show patience. Rest, heal, celebrate if you wish, mourn if you must. Come morning, we shall discuss delivering you from your parasite. <laughs> I trust you celebrated most heartily. Curious. I wonder if the tadpole shares in your suffering the morning after. I'm glad to hear it. You'll need fortitude for what's to come. I promise to help you with your infection. There's cause for hope, but it's... complicated.
Some form of magic is arresting the Ceramorphosis process, while still granting you certain benefits. Your ability to read each other's thoughts, for instance. Magic such as this doesn't arise naturally. Someone is pulling the strings, someone of great power. If you wish to cure your infection, you must find them. These absolute wretches are rallied at Moonrise Towers, farther along the Chiontha. Whoever is behind this magic must be there. You must go there. The journey will be perilous, but it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. You're half right. You have to get to Moonrise, but you still have a choice of how to get there. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or cutting through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel leading from the Temple of Saluna right down into the Underdark and beyond. The entrance is hidden somewhere in the Temple Ruins. Aradin and his lot thought they'd find fortune down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm managed to rally a whole army of Dark Justices in a secret stronghold deep in the Underdark. Dark Justicias? I must see for myself. From there, his forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers in secret. But... Ketherick was defeated before he could launch an attack from the Underdark. Ketherick took his secrets with him to the grave. You'd need a veritable underground city to conceal the force he mustered. Yet none has ever been found. If you find it, I'll wager it'll reveal a route all the way to Moonrise Towers, bypassing the worst of the Shadow Curse. You'll need to pick it up where Aradin left off. Find the hidden entrance. It's somewhere in the Temple of Saluna. One of the adventurers had a clue to help find it. A dwarf called Brian. It might still be found on his corpse. Wherever the goblins left it. Anything is preferable to risking the Shadow Curse. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. Unfinished business. It seems our fates have aligned. May Sylvanus guide us. Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Ormelium! I hope this is important to learn. If my Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No cerebral fortune. That's impossible. That intrigue. Are you looking to have it extracted? 
Geich. Your head will make a fine trophy for my queen. Please hold. I understand your rage against my kin. One of my brethren forced a tadpole into your eye. Or ear, perhaps. But I assure you, I stand with the Society of Brilliance, not the colonies of my people. Fool! They infest your head and invade your dreams, and still you would parley. I ask only that you refrain from violence. I respect that your opinion of my kind may be charged. If that settles matters for the time being. Would you like a diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see. As Omelum's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size, alive, awake, almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even without the shield, the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma. It is not ideal. The process would surely kill you. The Nautiloid. Fascinating. I have never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Lithid Empire. We ruled the entire astral plane. From their decks. The design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. Of course, I am sorry I cannot assist you in its removal, but I have an idea. Oh, perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. A tincture distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh tongue of madness and Timask spores. But be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timasks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. The Underdark, of course, although they are quite rare, and their discovery perilous. Hmm. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. The Southwest, when I last saw her, although her tower does have a tendency to move. She is quite fond of her garden. Lenore has always been a lonely sort. Uh, nature was her only companion. I offered her the chance to join the society, but she refused. Her experiments on Sousa Bark took priority. 
My formula will hamper the more harmful effects once the mushrooms are brewed into a potion. Your sanity, however much you possess, should remain intact. Travels be safe and swift. I greet you, child of the sun. How has your search for the mushrooms fared? These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment to brew them to proper potency. Melon turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draft. I can make no promises as to its taste. The acidic liquid tightens your throat, burning on the way down. It's a bolt of agony straight to your stomach. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Sinking into a starless void that has no end. The connection between mind and body draws thin and tight. The tadpole spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. Cold blades lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power, more power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeloan, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. Indeed, although I may have another solution, albeit a temporary I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn?
Ryan's removal seemed preferable to negation. And I must admit, I was curious to study the tadpole myself. My research is in perpetual need of funding. Yes, I am willing to accept your coin. with this abomination, nigh unthinkable. Yet, even Vlacketh herself could not deny the ring's merit. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. Twelve classes. Twelve class guides now in one super long.